UFC lightweight Islam Makhachev wants to face Charles Oliveira for the vacant title in October, and believes he will beat the Brazilian at his own game of submission grappling. Makhachev is clearly an elite talent, but despite UFC best efforts, he has yet to face a top 10 ranked fighter with a full camp behind him. Ultimately, Makhachev can only beat up the men who make it into the cage with him, and he's consistently done just that. UFC say it's gonna be fight for the title for me because I, I hope I deserve it because now I have 10 fight wins and I'm ready to reach my time. Olha, na realidade, se eles querem tanto isso, né? Eles têm que correr atrás do campeão. Eu corri atrás do campeão, né? Então eu, eu estou no campeão. Eu quero lutar em dezembro. Eu, você quer tanto isso? Se vocês querem tanto isso? Então vamos fazer legal. Agora eu vou falar você. Vamos lutar em janeiro no Brasil. Olha só, eu não vou falar que eu vou finalizar, que eu vou nocautear. Eu vou vencer ele. Olha só, eu vou vencer ele, Macaxeira. Charles Oliveira put it all together somewhere around 2018 and started crushing opponents left and right. But it took some time before people accepted this was an entirely new do Bronx. He since won 11 in a row with 10 finishes, capturing and defending the 155 pound belt in the process. At UFC 274 on Saturday night, Gagey dropped Oliveira on two occasions in the opening round, first with a right uppercut and then with a left hook. Yeah. Oliveira found his footing and responded with relentless pressure. Du Bronx found the home a right hand that seated Gay G. Oliveira immediately spun his web on the ground, transitioning from a rear naked choke to force Gay G to tap. In a row and still the best right rate on planet Earth. We can see that we have power. We have a giant fire in our hands. We have a gigantic team that we train every day. I was there, I hit him, I hit him. I hit him in knockdown, I hit him. I hit him in the front of the whole time. That's it, that's real. Oliveira, he looked phenomenal in his last fight. He, the whole weight issue, but he's kind of the uncrowned champion, so to speak. He needs to fight for the title. For someone else to skip the line and him not to fight, it would be a tragedy. Oliveira has always had some dangerous weapons on his feet, but he's developed onto such an incredible offensive force because he fully believes in his ability to pursue the knockout with getting tired. Representing shoot box, Oliveira stands tall, steps lightly with his lead leg, and pins his elbows to his ribs with his hands to his temples. In recent bouts, Oliveira has really been pressuring his opponents from the stance, punishing them with damage that adds up quickly. As one would expect of the rangy Brazilian, his distance work and damage begins with his kicks. More than most, Oliveira sticks his fall with lots of teeps to the midsection. Rather than a simple step slash check, that leg look could be a teep from his lead leg. It could also be a step into a back leg teep. Going back a bit farther, one of Oliveira's most impressive performances in his current win streak came when he handed former professional kickboxer David Tamer his first UFC loss. Oliveira really showed off his creativity in that bout. And he's the base, that's it! Charles Oliveira closes the rivalry! Charles Oliveira, his BJJ is almost non-existent. As great of a striker he is and as a wrestler, his BJJ is one of the weakest I've ever seen in the lightweight division. Always giving up his back. So it's a dangerous fight. The more I think about it, the more I do side with Oliveira. But I do think it could potentially be one of Oliveira's toughest fights. Oliveira has secured the most submissions in UFC history already. The Brazilian is both incredible, aggressive, and dangerous, which helps explain his 15 tap out wins. Once the body triangle is locked in, Oliveira will immediately begin wrenching at the face to slip an arm beneath the chin. He scored some of his best finishes in this fashion, simply going all out to attack the neck as soon as he's in position. Oliveira's defensive improvement is clear as well, a result of both experience and confidence. The second one is really key, Oliveira looks much better firing back under pressure. He's still a bit tall and keeps his head in one place, but he's less vulnerable than in the past. Charles Oliveira was smoking guys up until he fought Michael Chandler. When he fought a real guy in the top five, the fight wasn't as easy. The experience and skill level that the guys have at the top are completely different. Chandler, 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 Então, na minha cabeça, eu fui campeão quando eu venci no Michael Chandler. Essa é a realidade. All of this improvement brings us to the ferocious first round of Oliveira did his best to never allow Poirier to purely box. Whenever the two decided to stand their ground, those shots were punishing, and they served to disrupt Poirier's boxing rhythm and head movement. Immediately, Oliveira would attempt to rip a painful knee into Poirier's gut, even if Poirier had him hurt half a second earlier.
Charles Oliveira has more than proven that he's the champion. So I'm excited to see, does he make the changes and has he now reached the championship level? Charles Oliveira versus Islam Makhachev for vacant UFC lightweight championship, the fight of 22 in Abu Dhabi, located in the United Arab Emirates. This was the fight to make to Islam Makhachev. He had to fight in Abu Dhabi. I think we can all agree here. We want to see Islam Makhachev tested, and this is the this is a really good test for him. You know that that fight makes sense in Abu Dhabi. Everybody wanted to do it. I think everybody wanted to see it. So here we are. You know, I think it's gonna be a good match because. This guy good in the striking, wrestling, and grappling, but I, I'm gonna make him tired, pressure him, and make him give up, you know? Because I know this guy, he don't like when somebody go with him like three, four rounds. When he try to finish someone, like give some choke, but when he cannot do this, he give up all the time. Makesh's boxing is a bit stiffer. He's grown more confident and comfortable over the years but he still prefers short exchanges. Fighting from the southpaw stance, Makeshev's best weapon is very obviously his left leg. Despite being a lifelong wrestler more than anything else, he's able to throw strong left kicks while relaxed. Russian and world champion in combat Sambo, a tremendous portion of Makeshev's fights are spent with the Dagestani combat in top control. In Dagestan, we have a lot of good fighters, good wrestling guys. Why? Because they're always training hard. That's why in Dagestan everybody training hard. That's why I training hard in Dagestan too. Islam is possibly the best grappler, one of the best grapplers I've seen. That pressure on top, just the pressure you see what he does with his like shoulders and his hips and like transferring his weight one side to the other. Honest to God, phenomenal. He's as complete as you get. He can wrestle, he can do jiu-jitsu, and then he can strike. And in all those things, he's quite capable. So, he's a great fighter. When you see Islam, he throws a lot of nice head kicks. They're very, very fluid. He has a lot of overhand rights. He has good head movement. He's slick. He's very, very slick. He's got good submissions, good wrestling. Very well-rounded. Makashev's clinic against Nick Lentz is perhaps the best example. In the first real wrestling exchange of the fight, Makeshev controlled an under along the fence and threatened an outside throw on the far leg. Makeshev scored an easy inside trip on the near leg. A clear victory for Makeshev. Against Dan Hooker, he converted a caught kick into an effortless double leg while pressing the Kiwi. Then, he quickly moved into side control, a much better finishing position. The crank was tight and fully torqued the shit that he forced a fight ending scream from the hangman. Now it's time. Before it was like top 11, top 15 somewhat, but this guy number 6, now I have to talk. 9 fight win streak, I'm ready for, for title fight. Islam is looking really good out there, he's looking fantastic, he's looking almost unstoppable. If anybody's gonna be a favorite over the champion, it would be Islam Makashev. Charles Oliver, I believe, has been the most consistent underdog on average out of any champion in modern history. <laughs> Porém, a gente tem que falar de peso, né? Ah, se você pegar minhas últimas 11 lutas, você pega os últimos 11 nomes. A minha trocação é melhor do que a dele, e aquilo que ele faz de melhor, eu sou só o maior finalizador da história do UFC. E aí agora vocês param, pensem e vocês veem o que é bom. I have grappling skills more than him, because I grapple with all high level grapplers. This guy, he gonna try to finish me in ground, but it's gonna be so hard for me. It's not Makashev was fighting for the belt now. And he has shown that he is really ready to try and uh, become a UFC champion. Makashev is an incredible fighter, a grappling master who is highly favored to win his 11th straight bout inside the octagon. And the Oliveira is one of the finest offensive fighters in our sport. And he's matched opposite another dynamic finisher. As has become the trend with Du Bronx title fights, a matchup against Makashev presents a very interesting challenge. Makashev drowns opponents with takedowns and top pressure en route to a submission. Oliver has a submission threat so great, even on his back, that most fighters refuse to get near him. Makashev likely can't contend with Oliver in a straight striking match though, will be fascinating to see how these two expert grapplers execute their game plans. Cara, na realidade ele é um cara que gosta de botar para baixo, trabalha um, um pouco o box ali, joga sempre um monte de conta para querer botar para baixo. Ah, de verdade, eu não fico me preocupado com quem quer me botar para baixo. Sou o maior finalizador da história do Ultimate. Eu estou pronto para essa luta. Uh, my goal, I have to finish 
don't forget because I have to show uh, all people my level. That's why I'm gonna try to finish it. Se eu bater no Isa Macaxá, eu vou desafiar o Khabib para ir voltar da aposentadoria. I'm gonna show best performance. I'm gonna destroy these guys.